Hey, this is Mikey with another After Effects tutorial, and in this video I want to show you how to do this parallax scrolling technique using just some simple expressions. So first off, I want to kind of show you where I got these assets for this video. I did not create all these myself. So um, right here, if you go to parallax scrolling in Wikipedia, and I will have these links down in the description, so go ahead and go there. There's some of these already made, and I downloaded those. And then the next thing was this download free vector walk cycle HD, and I'll give you a link to this video as well. And this is what I grabbed just to kind of throw in here really quick for my example. So now let's go to the After Effects project. And let me kind of show you how I did this. So first off, let's create a new composition. And let's call this Parawalk. So now in this composition, let's bring in some of our assets. So let's go into the, my project files. I've got these um, vegetation kind of hill things. And you know what? I'm going to come into the composition settings and let's bring this down 1280 by 720. That's going to be plenty big. And then we've got the sky background. And what else do we have? We've got the ground. We also need the walk cycle. Okay, so those are all the assets I need to create this. So let's go ahead and just hide the ones we're not using at first. So the sky background, let's bring that to the bottom. And then the vegetation, um, the middle layer is in the middle and then the ground is on the front. So this is about how we want it. Let's go ahead and just scale the sky background up. And what I want to do now is I want to be able to move these clouds a little bit. So I'm going to pre-compose this. So Command Shift C. Let's call this sky. And let's move all attributes into a new composition. And then let's go into this composition, change the settings and we want the width to be a lot wider. So I'm just going to kind of guess on that. And then let's just take this and let's move it over here, duplicate it, and kind of create just a, a longer sky. Let's come back into this main composition and let's do the same thing for these hills. So let's pre-comp that. Call that hills, move all attributes, and then let's go into that layer. Let's duplicate. Uh, let's scale this up, and let's change the composition settings to be a lot wider. Let's go to about seven thousand. Mm, that's still pretty wide. Okay. Now with this one, let's duplicate this a couple of times, and. We can even kind of change these up a little bit, make some smaller. And I do want all these to be all on the same level. So let's bring in a ruler so they're in the right spots. I can also come in here to uh, just crop. So maybe there's just one there. And maybe there's maybe not the middle one there to kind of add some variation so it doesn't look like I'm just copying the same thing over and over again like I am. So we have that. Now let's do the last thing to the ground layer. Let's pre compose that. Call this ground. Let's go into that one. And this one's going to need to be the widest. So before it was at about three and a half. So let's go up to about five. And then let's scale this up. Let's duplicate this several times. Just to fill in the entire ground here. Okay. 
So now we have our, our layers and they're all in different spots and I want to align them all up on the left. So I'm going to highlight all of these layers and let's go to my align tools. So if I go to window align, make sure that it's set on composition because I want to align all these layers to the left hand side of this composition. You can see this one goes way over here, over here, over here, and they're not all lined up. So set to composition, highlight the three layers that you want to line up. And then right here where it says horizontal left align, I'm going to click that and it scoots everything over and you can see now they're all lined up on the left here. So that's perfect. Let's go back and fit this. So the next thing we want to do is let's start making these things move. And this is really simple and it's just a simple expression. Well, it's not really simple. It's actually a little bit complex, but I can step you through it very easily. And what I like to do is I'm going to create two new nulls. So here's a null object and I'm going to call this control. Let's do another one and we'll call this move. Actually, layer one. So in the control null, and we can go ahead and turn these both hidden. In the control null, I'm going to go to add an effect, expression control, slider control. And this is going to adjust the movement of my, my layers. Now, the next thing I want to do is on this layer null, let's go into position. Let's click on the stopwatch, but hold down Option or Alt on your keyboard, and it goes into the expression dialog box. And let's add an expression. So right now, um, it's centered at 640 and 360. That's where the layer is. And so what I want to do is let's go right bracket, um, let's go left bracket, pick whip the front, comma, pick whip the second value, and then right bracket, parentheses. And what this does is it's basically writing an expression to say to do nothing. I've actually just linked it to the original properties. But I like to start off that way. Now let's add a variable. I'm going to call this spread because it's going to determine the spread of these layers. So spread equals index times 10 times, and this is where when you come into this effect, slider control. Click that and then end with a semicolon. So what this does is index is the number, the layer number. So this is layer number one. So it's going to take index times 10 times this um, slider control. And then that gives you your value. So when I have multiple layers, it's going to have a different value because there's different layer numbers. That's the index control. So then what I can do here is for this, for this first value, I'm going to hit minus spread right here. Click OK or click off of it. And then what I can do is let's turn this on. And when I go to this control, it's going to move just with the, this uh, slider control. Now if I duplicate this a few times, and then now you can see they're all moving at different rates. And that's kind of the essence of this effect. So what I want to do now is I can take these different layers and then attach them to these different uh, null objects to create the parallax movement. So let's take the ground, let's attach it to layer one, the hills, layer two, and I want the sky to be layer four. The reason why I have four is the more nulls you create, the more space you have. So if I want, say, the sky to barely move at all, but this front to move quite a bit, then maybe I need to add lots of these nulls, so I just duplicate lots of them, and let's take the sky and attach it to layer seven instead. So now let's go into the control layer, and we can move, and you can see they all kind of move independently of each other. Now I want these front bushes to move a lot faster than these hills, so let's take these hills and let's maybe link it to layer four. You know, something more in the middle. Then I can come into this control layer at the beginning. Let's keyframe that. 
go to the end. Let's bring it to, I don't know, about 50. And as I play through this, you can see they're all moving at separate, uh, at different rates. That may be a little bit too fast. And so let's go here and maybe bring this down to 20. That's pretty good. Now let's add in our walk cycle. Cycle. So let's turn on this layer. And I'm just going to go into Effect, King. Let's do an Extract Filter. Invert that. And there's my guy. You know what? I actually want to probably take this and I want him to be white. So Effect, Color, and let's Tint. Now he's white, and then let's add some layer styles, uh, stroke around him, just so he kind of pops out a little bit more. So there is my guy walking around, and I can also come in here, maybe he's a little tall, let's scale him down. Let's move him, let's render this out and see what it looks like. He's moving pretty fast here. So, you know, to kind of make this look a, bit, a little bit more real, is I can take this ground. Right now it's connected to layer one. If I add it to layer two, it's going to move a little bit slower. Or I take the hills, let's put those on layer six, and then the ground on layer three. So that's kind of a way you can kind of adjust things. So how this expression works is it takes the amount of layers. So say there's seven layers, and it spreads them equally. You can see here when we have all of these null objects, how they're, they're spread evenly across. So if I'm attaching this ground right here to layer three, and then I'm attaching the hills to layer six, and the sky to layer seven, you can see that they're all going to move differently. And so the further apart they are, the higher the number the slower it's going to move. So if I don't want these these uh, clouds to move very fast at all, I can come in here and make lots of layers. And then let's come in, take this guy, bring that up to layer 15, maybe the hills to layer 11, the ground. And at this point, maybe it's moving a lot too fast, so let's go to the end here. Let's go to my control, and let's bring this down to about 5. And you can see there's a lot of kind of uh, things you can do with this. And something to note here is I did not put these in 3D space. If you can see, it's all still 2D animations here. They all just happen to be moving at different rates. So that's the tutorial. This is a pretty quick one. I hope you learned a lot. Um, and let me just show you this um, expression one more time. And um, so right here. And you can actually, I'm going to put this in the description. You can just copy and paste this into your position. Remember, you do need to connect it to a control layer right here, this slider. So that's what this effect slider control is here. So if you have yours named something different, just make sure you re-pick whip that to the right thing. Just go through this tutorial again and, and just follow along with me. But here is the expression. It's in the description. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you have any questions or comments, just put them down in the comments below. And if you have any tutorial requests, just put those in the comments below too. And I'm always looking for new ideas to do tutorials on. Thanks for watching. If you haven't done so, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I put out new videos every Friday, and I think they're great. So let me know what you think. Love to hear from you. Thanks.